good day everyone or good night depending on where you are now today i'm going to walk you through how to solve difficult inclined plane questions now the question of focus for today is that an object that weighs 80 kilograms slid down a 20 degree slope if the object increased in speed from zero meters per second to six meters per second in eight seconds. What is the coefficient of friction? Before I dive into solving this question, I want us to do a quick review. Now, what I want to focus on or think about is an object that is sitting on a surface. Any object that sits on a surface, there will be an upward force. This upward force is called the normal. What I want you to remember is that the normal is always perpendicular to the surface. Opposing this force will be, for will be a force acting downwards. This force is the weight of the object. If the object is regularly shaped, then this force will go straight through the middle. Now think about applying a force to the object by pulling or pushing. So let's say you're pulling towards the right. So this pulling force will be called the applied force. Opposing the applied force will be a force of friction. Now, the frictional force is depending on a number of things. It could be depend on the weight of the object, and it also depends on how smooth or rough the, the surface is. Now, what I want you to do now is to apply this or consider this now on an inclined plane. So notice I put this object now on an inclined plane. Now what I want you to notice here is that there is still be the normal acting perpendicular to the surface. The frictional force is still there and the applied force is still there. And they're acting parallel to the incline. Now, there's something interesting happening here is that there will be the weight of the object acting at an angle. This angle is the same as the slope or the angle of the inclined plane. Now, when you focus on something here, let's think about force diagrams or vector diagrams. All right, so what I'm going to do is to complete the sides of this shape, and what we're going to get is uh, a rectangle. The green lines, they are the same. They are equivalent. Remember this green line up here, which is the applied force, is acting parallel to the inclined plane. It is the same as the broken line at the bottom. The perpendicular force, which is this white line here, is the same as the broken line on this side because opposite sides and rectangle are equivalent. Now, what I want to focus on is that the mass times gravity, which is the weight of the object, is acting at, at this angle. This angle is the same as the angle of the incline. Now, based on triangle, now what do we have on either side is that we can say that this side is given as the hypotenuse times sine theta because this sign is opposite the angle and remember that opposite over hypotenuse is equal to sine the angle so the side the side must be given as the hypotenuse which is mg mass times gravity times sine theta the adjacent side which is the perpendicular force will be given as the hypotenuse, which is mass times gravity, times cos theta. And remember that cos, the angle, is equivalent to 
the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And hence, we have these two sides be given us these expressions. Now, what I want to do next, right, is look at some formula. And I want you to remember that the coefficient of friction is given as the frictional force divided by the normal force. Also, I want you to consider this, is that the total force along the incline is given as mass times the acceleration. Why I want to focus on the force going on the incline is because any movement will be along the parallel line. Also, what I want you to remember as well is that the total force or the resultant force along the parallel line is given as the applied force minus the frictional force. Why A minus? Is because the applied force and the frictional force, they are going in opposite direction. And so the difference between these two forces will give you the resultant force along the parallel line. So just bear these, um, write down these uh, formulas and have them for what we're going to do next. So what I want you to do as well, if you're in an examination situation, is to turn your page and you'll notice you get a better viewing of your incline. Also, what I wanted to do is to focus on one of these triangles. We're going to focus on this bottom one. So notice this bottom triangle is blinking. I'm going to take this piece out and use it to analyze our questions or use it to solve our questions. So taking out the triangle, and you can do whatever you decide to do, whichever make you comfortable in looking at the triangle, just draw it the way you prefer. And so I'm going to turn it this way. Regardless of how you turn the triangle, the hypotenuse is always the weight, which is mass times gravity. The opposite side is always given as the hypotenuse multiplied by sine theta. The adjacent side to the angle or the slope is always given as the hypotenuse multiplied by cos theta. And once you have this triangle, then you are set to answer the questions. So now let's review our question. Now this question states, remember, an object that weighs 80 kilograms, so I'm highlighting the, the values that we're working with here, it slid down a 20 degree slope. If the object increased in speed from 0 meters per second to 6 meters per second in 8 seconds, then what is the coefficient? Now let's write down these things that we want to find or the things that are important to us in this question. And so we need to record our mass, which is 80 kilograms, or our slope, which is 20 degrees. And the change in speed is from 0 meters per second to 6 meters per second. And the time that this change of speed takes is 8 seconds. And we want to find our coefficient of friction. Now, I want to notice something here. If there's a change in speed in a given time, we can find our acceleration. And so acceleration is a change of speed, which is 6 over 8 seconds, which gives us 0 0.75 meters per second squared. Now, we could just rewrite this quickly. And so the important thing here, now we have our mass, we have our slope, which is 20 degrees. We have our acceleration, which is 0 0.75 meters per second squared. And we want to find our coefficient of friction. Now, let's look at this now overall in terms of our inclined plane and what we're going to find. Now, the best thing to do here is to find our normal first, okay? Because once we want to find the coefficient of friction, we want to find our normal and we want to find our frictional force. But to find our frictional force, we have to do something first as well. So let's go ahead and find our normal. Our normal is the same as the perpendicular line, okay? So remember your triangle that line that is adjacent to the angle, okay? So that side is given as the hypotenuse, which is mass times gravity, 
times cos theta. Now, so mass times gravity, which is 80 times 10 times cos 20 degrees. So we have 800 times 0 0.94, and that is equivalent to 752 newtons. So our normal force is 752 newtons. Now, to find our frictional force, we have to go first and find our parallel force. Our parallel force, which is the applied force, is given as mg sine theta. Now, mg sine theta, again, it is 80 kilograms for mass, 10 for gravity. We're using 10 to be for gravity in this case, and sine 20 degrees. Here we have 800 times 0 0.34 which gives us uh, 272 newtons. Now, since we have found these two um, forces, our normal force, which is our perpendicular force, and our applied force, which is our parallel force. Now, we can write down these. And what we have, we have our normal, we have our applied force, we have our mass, we have our acceleration. Now, since we find our normal, now our target, our objective really, is to find our frictional force. And so once we find that, we can find our coefficient of friction. All right, so first, what I want to think about, at least to remember, is that the total force along the parallel line is given as mass times acceleration. Also, the total force or the resultant force is given as the applied force minus the frictional force. From this first equation here, what we have is that the resultant force is equal to 80 kilograms from the mass, 0 0.75 from our acceleration, which here gives us 60 newtons. Now, from the other equation, we can see that our friction is equal to our applied force minus our resultant force. We already found our applied force, which is the parallel force, and it's given as 272. And so minus now our resultant force on the parallel line is 60 newtons, so as a result, we end up with 212 newtons. Now we have two things. We have our frictional force and we have our normal force. So now we can find our coefficient of friction. Now how we do this, remember, coefficient of friction is given as the frictional force divided by the normal. And so our frictional force, which is 212, divided by our 752, which gives us 0 0.28. Remember that our coefficient of friction is dimensionless. Because coefficient of friction is the ratio between the frictional force and the normal. And it indicates how smooth or how rough the surface is. All right, and so we now we solve our question, and now we are going to depart. And before I go, I want to tell you that I truly appreciate you watching these lessons. And I want you to remember that never let the slopes in life stop you from going higher. Have a blessed and wonderful day. See you next time.